Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you back up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today I'm going to be looking at upgrading some of the control system for the points here on the layout. Now this is an area where I've originally come from the DC School of Thought. Originally all the points were wired up through a CDU and then I gradually started to convert over to the digital way of doing things. And actually, there's no regrets, no looking back. I've been really pleased with how that's turned out. But the real sticking point has often been the method of control. Now, yeah, you can use the handset on the NCE system, and it's quite a long-winded way of doing it, going into the accessory menu, picking the accessory, picking which way you want it to fire, with no real indication on where that point is actually set in the first place. So you get a 50% chance, unless you know your layout very, very well. I'm actually telling it to change the point in the same direction it's already changed. Now, I brought on board the Alpha Central unit, which gave me 12 uh, switches already made up in a handy little unit that just plugged straight into the bus. But I have slowly fallen in love with the Cobalt S levers, and I've got one of them here, and you can probably see the full installation down there. And what we're going to be doing today is showing you how, well, the ins and outs of how these work, but then more importantly, perhaps, showing you how I took this and 18 others and turned it into this miniature representation of a signal box to really add something special to Weir Yard. So come with me and I'm really looking forward to showing you this project. And don't forget as well that we've got some affiliate links in the description box down below that take you to Rails of Sheffield to find all of the products that have been used today. So today I'm going to be looking at the Cobalt S levers and this is a product which um, I only knew of in passing before I went to work at DCC Concepts and um, well we're all familiar with different ways that you can control your points and outwardly at least at first glance it looks um, something similar to the footprint of the Hornby switches but also if we go further back uh, these are the Hornby 00 switches uh, got a bank of six here just to show you the relative footprints of those but also perhaps more modern modelers will be familiar with the Pico passing contact switches uh, there's a bank of six here in their um, mounting box forgive the wire mess these have actually been usurped by some of these and when you look at the difference between the two there's just really no contest and I'm going to get to some of the other features that I really love about this in a moment. So putting the Hornby 00 and the Pico switches to one side, uh, what do you get in a packet? Well, of course, you get the lever in packs of singles. They're also done in packs of six and packs of 12 too, which give you a degree of cost saving if you're going to put in a big installation like the one that we've got here on Weir Yard. Um, each lever, whether you buy a single pack through to the 12 pack, also comes with its own distance piece. So I've got one of these here, and uh, these just uh, mount onto the lever if you want them, and they just help to separate out the levers. So uh, what I'm going to do here, let's uh, put that onto that side. I'm going to bring in another lever, and you can push them together. And it just gives you that little bit of extra space between the levers. Now, you don't have to use those. On the Weir Yard installation, I have uh, not bothered with the uh, spacers. So these just gang together and there's, there's no glue, there's no screws. You just push them together and it's a friction fit and it just makes for a neat lever assembly. You also get uh, a wiring loom. And uh, this on that end has a, a very, very easy, you can only plug it in one way round connector. It just goes in there 
and that gives you the breakout wires for the three switches that are contained within this all activated from the single machined brass lever and that as well is something that I fell in love with we've got this prototypical locking mechanism just like a real signal so you can't knock these accidentally see there there's no movement until you pull up the locking mechanism and move it across and you'll see when it gets to the other position that flicks back in and that is locked in place. These give you the breakout for uh, the one momentary passing contact switch that's in there, but also the other on-on switches. So you can see immediately that one of these will give you three of this style of switch or three of these style of switches, uh, Pico obviously as well, and Hornby 00 doing momentary passing contact switches as well as on-on switches. You can use one half of that on-on switch as being an on-off switch, just don't wire in the other half, and that will mean that one lever can, for example, switch a point. It can then also do the frog polarity for that point automatically with the lever throw. And it can also give you the panel indication for what that uh, point is doing. Or you could use that extra on-on switch uh, for doing something like an interlocked colour light signal. The possibilities are actually quite endless with this. And that's what I like about it. It uh, gives you those three switches in one. Whereas with all other products on the market, you're going to need three switches. And when you add that up, actually, cost-wise you're not actually paying too much for these. They also come with uh, some etched numbers and these are for detailing up the levers. Um, they just go on just like you'd see in a real signal box and give you a numbering of each lever. And uh, these are actually, I really like, they're etched brass and they've got some raised detail on the numbers. Now, uh, DCC Concepts also sell a pack of etched brass numbers that go from number 1 through to number 99 and they're done in exactly the same way but it, what it means is that even the largest of lever installations can carry unique numbers for each of the levers and you can tie these numbers into for example if they're digital points they can be the uh, DCC accessory address that matches the levers just so that you've got the option of knowing exactly which number uh, the points are programmed as um, but they're very very easy to detail up I find that if you give a quick coat of something like Humbrol enamel over the entire fret let that dry completely and then placing the fret on a flat surface using something even as simple as a track cleaning rubber, I find is just abrasive enough to take the paint off just on the raised detail of the numbers and also the surrounds. And we get a really, really neat and attractive finish doing that with complete ease. So you don't have to worry about carefully painting this in with a tiny, tiny brush. Really don't do that. Just use the method that I have outlined. Each lever also comes with a couple of detailing parts, which at first glance, I think a lot of people look at these and go, what on earth is that? And these are solid metal castings, and they're actually a detailing piece, which uh, on the top of the levers, once you've got the full installation, if you want to go for the full um, signal box experience, it's really easy to just glue these onto the top and... Uh, you've then got a lever which looks much more like the real lever installations in a real signal box. If you've ever seen a lever frame such as those, then you'll know that actually um, that's how they tend to look. These are optional. They don't add anything to the practical functionality. It's just simply a case of if you want a lever installation like I'm showing you here, on Weir Yard today, they really do add a certain something. Now, I don't normally dismantle products. Um, it's not my style. And these are not a user dismantleable product. Um, but I am actually going to dismantle these for one really good reason. I just want to show you the quality of these. So I'm just going to take out 
the uh, four screws here, let's be careful not to lose these, but also an incredibly durable product as well. So I'm just going to open that up carefully, not uh, breaking those solder joints. These are actually white gold coated for superior electrical continuity. It also means they don't oxidize, so you're not going to suffer with uh, poor connections if uh, you're using these in a, uh, an environment that's prone to dew, say in a shed or an uninsulated loft. Um, we've got a lever here, which I'm just going to pull this out, and you can see there the full brass construction and that is solid that is not a tube that is machined brass we've got the uh, uh, ring on the bottom there that uh, sits on the pivot but then we've got the two contacts there sprung on the lever but this locking mechanism is exquisite you can see how it works pulling up and down there on the lever and I really wanted to show you that it's the inside of the switch you wouldn't normally see so these two tracks here and here and here, these are the on-on switches and then these sprung loaded pieces, these um, moving around a pivot there and there and making intermittent contact with the two uh, terminals there, that's your passing contact switch. And then it's all cleverly wired back just to this one plug which is where our wiring loom plugs in. Now. I don't advocate dismantling one of these. I've done it, so you don't have to. Uh, but really, I just felt that this mechanism in there and the construction of this ooze quality, I just wanted to show you it. And they're really easy to just put back together. Let's just uh, fiddle this back in between the contacts. Now, these are um, levers which were left over from my weir yard installation. I got all these second hand, so you may notice on this one the lever's been painted, and that again is something else that you can do. And when we show you the full lever installation, all of the levers are painted in prototypically accurate colours based on the function of the levers. So all bar, I think it's two control points, but just to give a bit of visual interest, I've painted them to represent home signals, uh, distance signals, uh, gong uh, activation levers, locking levers, we've also got um, uh, facing point locks and then combinations thereof and I don't have every variant on the wear yard lever frame but I do have most of the easier to paint ones. As they come out of the packet they're exactly like this one you can see there just the plain brass Really easy to paint up, use uh, something like Humbrol enamel I've used with great effect. Just need a small brush and a steady arm and uh, you know don't just slap it on, don't go too thickly, use two coats if necessary and you will have a really impressive installation. Now I'm going to put these to one side, put the uh, bits and pieces to one side and I want to show you this little piece. This is the alpha encoder and if you're going digital on your layout this is the other end of this wiring loom. Now the pack does come with a uh, breakout board that you solder these in. It is colour coded and it then allows you to solder wires in. They also sell a solder free connection harness which is a direct replacement for this instead of ending on bare wires, it actually ends in a connector block not unlike this, which means you don't need any solder to install these really, really easily. This alpha encoder um, gives you the means whereby, let's just find the uh, three wires for the momentary contact switch. So we've got the green, we've got the red, and we've got the black. Whilst these do come ready bared, I would suggest just taking a little bit more of that insulation off. The reason for this is um, otherwise it tends to clamp on the insulation, not on the wire, and then you don't get a good connection. Let's push that in. There we go, that's grabbed that. Red, sorry, green to left, all the way in. Black is common all the way in, and that is the first switch wired up, 
just plug in the end there like that and then when we power this up that will always be the first number on the end here now if this hasn't been set up it will be by default I think it's cab number four and uh, that will be a DCC accessory address number one if you don't have any other accessories on the layout you might as well leave it like that it just makes it a lot easier to set up we're looking at £16.50 for a single lever. We've got a affiliate link in the description box down below that takes you to Rails of Sheffield to pick these up. Accessories are around £12.95 a pack and they give you enough accessories for three levers, either the um, extra wiring looms with the solder-free terminal blocks or a detailing pack. Um, and if you want to buy a six pack of these levers, we're looking at a price of £94.50. And a 12 pack is £167.50, uh, with the AEU hovering somewhere around the £50 mark. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, and if you want the uh, actual numbers, and the AEU uh, comes in at uh, somewhere around the £50 mark. If you want accessory numbers, again, about £12.95 will buy you all of the brass numbers from number 1 to number 99, which means you can number your switches pretty much any number that you are likely to want. Moving back over to Weir Yard, what we can see here is the full installation. In this instance, we've got 19 of those levers. And the way I've set these up, there's an AU hidden behind and 12 of these levers replace 12 digital accessories uh, that didn't actually have switches before. I had to handle them all from the very long-winded menus in the NCE power cab. Now I set the AEU to start at address number 40. You can see here on the front I've got those uh, brass etched uh, metal plates in position. So forget about lever 39, add it as an afterthought because I had a few spare levers and it just gave me an opportunity to have one spare for the future. And uh, in keeping with the fact that it's a spare lever, then uh, it's been painted in this sort of matte white color to match with the real world convention on that. But lever number 40 onwards are actually the working ones. So 40 through to I think this green one here, number 51, that is the block of 12, which is the um, digital ones. How they're working? Well, they're feeding into that AEU. So we've got one of these behind, and they're just being, uh, the wiring looms from the levers are just plumbed into the solder-free sockets along the bottom from number 40 through to 51. Now, the levers beyond that uh, that's these six. These are actually replacing what were a bank of uh, Pico passing contact switches, which quite frankly looked naff when uh, these started to appear behind them. So I replaced those, I refurbished six more levers, and these are now plumbed directly through the CDU as a direct switch replacement for six points in the fiddle yard underneath that were never converted to digital. And these levers quite happily run with solenoids. So if I power up the frame, and what I need to do is, before I turn the entire system on, I need to move that one down. And the reason for this is because I've got a lot of ADS units, which are the solenoid accessory decoders. And if you have them all try and power up at a startup, it overwhelms the booster and makes it think that there's a short so on this lever, I've used the on-on switches, uh, wired just one half of them, to actually turn on and off two different sections of the layout, or at least the control bus controlling um, both the fiddle yard down below with its uh, ADS units with the points that are digital down there. Uh, and then also there's an eight-way ADS unit that this is also turning on and off. And that just locks enough out from the system so that when I turn it all on, we're not going to get that short. The passing contact switch on this is still plumbed to the AEU. And that is actually being used with a, a, a Cobalt SS base unit 
um, to use the relays on that and its frog changing switch to turn on and off some lighting function. So effectively I get digital control from the lever frame of that lighting function as well. And that's one of the reasons that I chose to paint this lever in green, which on a real lever frame would be used for something like a gong signal, which you would find, I guess, somewhere like a tunnel. Um, so it would be a, um, a, an audible gong that a train would activate if, say, the uh, signal, uh, the distance signal was set to um, on. And that would mean that uh, a train driver going through the tunnel would know that the next signal that they came to would be at danger and start to slow down. Um, so that's what the green colour is for, but it also makes it stand out in this lever frame. The yellow here is for a distance signal, and this lever actually does correspond with the uh, distance signal which I converted as part of a project to uh, use the Cobalt SS stepper motors to activate the ratio signals. We've also got the plain black, just um, point levers. These are mostly just point levers anyway. The um, black and blue on top, that means that that's a point that has its own integral uh, locking me mechanism, facing point light mechanism. So effectively, it's um, two functions in one lever pull. Red is for a home signal. All blue is just for activating the facing point locks. And then the other unique colours we've got here, we've got the red on top, yellow on bottom, and that in the real world would be a signal lever that uh, is actually activating a home signal and its corresponding distance signal. So when you pull this, they will both change at the same time from a single lever pull. Uh, the only other unique colour that's in this is right over here, We've got the brown here for, uh, this would actually be a locking lever. So if you had level crossing gates that are worked from the box, that lever would activate them. Now behind here, um, I've tried to detail things up and I've put in some fixtures and fittings which are in keeping with what you might see in a signal box. These are actually from the Pico detailing kit. Uh, these are in O-Gage, they very kindly sent this over quite some time ago, the LK710 signal box interior kit. And because I never had uh, an O-gauge signal box, I was never able to use it. And then I've put a back wall in made of card, which is hiding the AEU, and then I've built up behind with some rough ground, uh, which finishes off the scene quite nicely. So uh, when I take one of these, these are feeding the signal digitally into the AEU. So move that back and you hear the click of the points change. Move that back the other way. And again, you hear those points change. Take another lever. And these have such a lovely positive action to them. They're actually a real joy to make use of. And because they look so authentic, it just seemed a shame not to create this signal box type interior just to uh, actually uh, set them off so, so well. These signal levers down here, as I said in the uh, introduction, these are actually straight to the CDU. So when I change that, you can actually hear the differing sound function. There's no delay, it just happens. And that's going through the CDU. And they're just uh, points underneath and these levers are wired in as a direct replacement for those Pico passing contact switches, which actually made them incredibly quick and easy to wire up. And you can combine digital and non-digital in these frames uh, because each lever is a separate entity. But there you have it, a really easy build to radically improve your layout control functionality. Take the view that really with these on the market, why would you waste money on any other form of lever-based layout control? Well, I hope you really enjoyed this project. If you have, do tickle that thumbs up button and share it out as well. Sharing is caring. 
You can also find any of the products that we've used today through the handy affiliate link in the description box down below uh, that takes you to Rails of Sheffield where you can find them at what we think is some of the best prices that they are available out there today. Also, don't forget you can check us out over on Patreon, help us to make the videos that you want to see. And of course, uh, we have all of the merchandise available at the special link down below, so you too can be resplendent at shows in your Gronk It Up, I Do You DMU, My Layout, My Rules, and Terrier Fest, and more t-shirts and hoodies. And of course, don't forget the uh, JK Monday Club mugs too. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, take care, bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.